All right, let's get down to it. How does fear work? Well, it all starts with this. Thoughts lead to emotions, which lead to actions. I'm going to teach you with my whiteboard, just like I do with athletes and other clients in my office. So why do we get the emotion of fear? Well, it's the thought that we're in some kind of danger, right? The interesting thing is that our body reacts exactly like our ancestors that's reacted when they were faced with wild animals attacking and, uh, or, or in uh, wartime and, and any other sorts of fear like that. It's no different if you're afraid to go out and compete or just about to come up to a pressure situation in crunch time, the body reacts exactly the same. The same chemical and hormonal reactions. What actually happens is resources, blood and energy, glucose and oxygen, all go to support big muscle movements, the big muscles, so that you can fight or you can flight, run, hide, whatever you need to do. All right. That also means that your mind gets really focused on that survival, heightened focused on a single thing, which makes it tough for you to actually think in competition as well. All right. So this isn't exactly useful for sports now, is it? To have that fight or flight. Maybe in some sports at certain times. Now I want to bring up another formula that all my clients learn and everything we do runs through it. And here it is, I'm going to put a different color, and that is performance equals potential minus interference. This is the bottom line to all of this. So what is interference? Basically, two kinds of interference. All right? Fear, which is what we're doing here, and internal conflicts. Internal conflicts are things like, I want to win. I want to work out. I want to train and do what it takes to get to the next level. But you know what? There's another part of me that kind of wants to go see the world. There's another part of me that wants to spend more time with my friends. You're conflicted. That kind of thing can mess up an athlete's mind and, and the motivation and the confidence and the determination to get to that next level as well. What you need to understand a little bit more about how your mind functions. All right, so let's get rid of that. You've got two functions of the mind. All right, up here at the top, this is your conscious mind. And in the bottom, this is your unconscious mind. Now, some people call this the subconscious mind. And some people like to split them out. For our purposes, I just put them together. I don't like the prefix sub because it tends to be lesser or lower. And this is the part that you want to get in touch with. And you'll see why in a minute. This is the part that runs that fear response we were talking about. This is the part that stores all those interference patterns and runs them in the form of emotions, which get in the way of your actions or your performance. All right, so getting back to these, I'll use the terms interchangeably, subconscious or unconscious. It means the same thing for our purposes. Conscious mind is the part of you that makes all the decisions, choices. This part, the unconscious mind, is all of the automatic functions of your mind. This part's job is to run your body. It does not care about your happiness. It does not care about your sport. It does not care about anything really other than keeping you alive. That's its number one job. Right? It uses emotions 
to fulfill that function, to drive you to take actions to stay alive. All right? Now, that's the really simplistic part of all this. Right now, and for the rest of this training, I'm pretty much working with your conscious mind. I'm teaching you things. And we're working through it. We're trying to process it. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to apply it to our life, our sport, and our average everyday happenings, events, and experiences, right? But what we need to do is get communication between these two. Here, here's what I mean. You might be up here and you learned some trick from me or somebody else about how to deal with that fear, that nervousness, and that tension. And then game time shows up or crunch time at the end of the game or the match or meet. And you're up here going, okay, calm down. Just take some nice deep breaths. You know what to do. Think positively. Do all the things you were taught by coach. And guess what happens? That message stops right here at the border. And your body just keeps doing that fear response. All right? We call this the critical thinking faculty. You don't need to remember that. There is a block between your conscious and unconscious mind. All right? Now, here's the problem. Understand that's your unconscious mind, and I'll refer to that, and that's your conscious mind. Okay, I need to make some room here. Down here are stored beliefs or programs. Sometimes I call them programs, sometimes I call them beliefs. Or there's also called values. All right? We're going to call them beliefs for short. Basically, your unconscious mind is like an operating system of a computer, like Windows or Mac OS. Right? You're born with certain functions, just like we are here to keep us alive. Immune system, heart beating, all the ways our body operates automatically. That's part of the operating system. But then as we go through life, we learn things. We experience things. And we have perceptions about events. Those perceptions get stored here. Now, especially the first part of our life, this thing doesn't exist. And so everything that happens to you and that you think about it just goes right on in. Later in life, this thing builds up and it's tougher to get through. You still can. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But here's the problem. You've got programs here that get triggered in certain situations not just when there's a, you're facing a tiger or a bear about to attack you anymore, like our ancestors had to. No, just about ready to go compete. Fear gets triggered. It's chemical releases based on this belief. This belief is your thoughts. There's two kinds of thoughts. There's conscious thoughts, and then there's unconscious thoughts. These are just automatic. They just happen in the background. A lot of times you're not even aware of it. But they're there. All right? So what we need to do is we need to get rid of these beliefs that get triggered to release the fear emotion, which hinders your ability to perform. Is this starting to make sense now? Now, it would be nice if it was just a nice little simple little belief there that was like, be afraid uh, whenever you're about to perform because this is important. We could just erase that belief. It would be pretty easy. But it's not the case. What's going on really is it's like a web of interconnected beliefs that all, that all support each other. And these are really stubborn. And for the rest of this training, I'm going to help you take them apart one by one so that we can get rid of all of them. We're going to go through all of them and destroy them one by one. 